what we have next is our session, our twin sessions. You are either joining us for housing, dining, and residential education, which uh, will be uh, covered today by Michelle Black and Kirby Roberts, my two colleagues. Uh, and if you are in attendance uh, right now because you want to see the day in the life of a commuter presentation, uh, then in the chat, Gwen has made available uh, for all panelists and attendees, only click the link in the chat if you are going to the commuter event, okay? So with that, I will say, see you in 30 minutes. I'll leave it to Michelle and Kirby and I too will be clicking over to the commuter event. So take it away. Thank you. Let's go ahead and do introductions first. Kirby, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? And then I will share my screen so we can start the PowerPoint. Sounds good. Thank you, Michelle. My name is Kirby Roberts. I work with dining services at UMass Dartmouth and anything dining related, I can help answer your question. She is the dining goddess and is very good about getting back to us quickly. Um, I'm Michelle Black. I am assistant director for first year residences and academic initiatives with housing and residential education. And my colleague is in the chat. His name is Brad and he does know how to answer questions and he does work here. So anything he says that says he doesn't, he's fibbing. Just get comfortable with that. It's his sense of humor. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna share screen and see what I can do if I can get my PowerPoint to work. I'm seeing everything except my PowerPoint. Should have tried this earlier. I think I know what's going on. Try this again. Technology is not my friend. Okay, we're gonna get started. Kirby, can you see that? Because it's doing weird things to me. So I can see um, just a blank screen right now. Mm -hmm. It's not loading. I'm not sure what happened with it. Sorry about the technological problems, folks. Okay. Try this one more time. Yeah, there we go. I it? It. Yep. Great. Success at last. So we've done some introductions and we're gonna go some probably pretty quickly since we have a short amount of time. What I want you to know is if you have questions, please put them in the chat. And while I'm talking, Brad and Kirby will be looking and trying to answer, and then I'll do the same for them when Kirby takes over. Um, a lot of your answers are gonna be in this presentation, and we're gonna talk about a little bit about the new buildings so that you'll be able to see that if you haven't been here to take a tour yet. So we're starting with housing. There we go. These are our new buildings. Kirby's over there in the Grove, which is our dining center. And then we have Balsam and Spruce as our first year residence halls. And they're practically new because we only had a few students with us last year. So essentially this is gonna be like our first year with those. I'm having fun with, there we go. Um, just to give you an idea of what the rooms look like and what the square footage is, there are very, very few singles. Um, and that's by design. And then most of the rooms are double occupancy. And that's like a bird's eye view of what a typical room would look like and what the amenities are in that room. Um, we have found over many years of research and personal experience that students tend to do better if they have a roommate, somebody else who's going through the same thing they are. So they have somebody to talk with and to know that um, they're there for each other. This is without mattresses, but these are the amenities that are in the room. You're gonna find an extra long twin size bed, 
a desk, a you know, rolling chair, and a couple of uh, dressers, as well as a wardrobe. And this is our showroom. It will never look this clean again. Staffing. In the residence halls, we have a few layers of staffing to help your students succeed. On campus, we have live-in professional staff. Those are people who um, have completed their education. Our staff tends to be very experienced in working with students and have a number of years under their belt getting to know and working with students in residential education. Um, they live with the students in their own apartments, but they live with the students on campus in the residence halls. In addition to that, we have student leaders, many places call them resident assistants, some place, places call them resident associates. They are there to help your student get adjusted to college, to answer questions, be a resource. Um, if there is a roommate conflict, they're going to be there to help mediate and just to really help your student get connected. They do a lot of educational programming and things to help your students get to places on campus and be successful personally as well as in their academic life. Um, when it comes to getting a residence hall room, the students need to fill out the application themselves. And we tell them to do that because sometimes people will hope that their student will have a certain behavior, like going to bed at a reasonable hour, and the student really isn't that way. Plus, they need to make sure that they're representing themselves. So we ask they make sure that they're answering the questions and they're looking and matching their roommates. Once they answer questions in our contract process, they will actually get information about who is a high match, a percentage match with their answers to their to the lifestyle questions. So it seems to work really well. It's kind of like roommatematch.com, only more successful. Um, students can also choose a roommate that they already know in advance as long as they're talking to each other and it's a mutual request. Um, we have engagement communities in the first year halls and there are things like um, a couple of floors that are specifically for visual and performing arts students, uh, floors that are specifically for engineering students, floors that are there for people who are interested in sustainability and volunteerism. So your students will be asked to choose amongst those. Um, there's also a few floors that are about learning about being at UMSD so that they are able to adjust if they haven't chosen a major yet. So that will be an expectation for your student to choose. That automatically happens as they're answering those lifestyle questions. So they've probably already done that if they have their room assignment. Once they get their deposit in and are ready to go, they will log in and they'll know how to do this better than I and Brad can answer any questions about logging in for contracting. But they will use their UMASD email for communications with our departments from here on out. So please make sure they're checking their email on a regular basis, daily, um, multiple times a week, whatever works for them, but make sure they're checking that because that's where we're gonna be sending information to them. Once they're there, there's a little bit difference in how billing goes for first year students who are living in the new buildings because the new buildings are structures that are owned by a private company. So the private company does the billing. Your student has the ability if they are getting financial aid of some sort, scholarships, loans, whatever, they can authorize any overage from what is not spent on tuition and fees to go towards their housing bill. And they just have to click when it, it comes to housing charges. There are going to be a number of sessions available to you that will email two families and two students saying, hey, if you're confused or not sure how the billing works, Machel Mata is going to specifically do a number of like half hour sessions just to help walk people through that. So walk, watch for that information as it comes to you. So students will go through and answer the questions um, as they go through this. And it's really great on how they match because you'll see like this person is a 70% match with this student they fill this out. This one's a 67% match. So that's really how they go. And then they have a chance to chat with each other and get to know each other before they choose a room space. So what happens if students don't get along with their roommates? Um, it happens. It, it doesn't mean anybody's bad. It just means that they're going through transition. We ask that the first two weeks of school 
that we hold people in place so we know where spaces are and to give people a chance to get to know each other. The resident assistant is there to help walk your student through doing a roommate agreement, which is gonna help them talk about, hey, when are we gonna clean the room? Um, what's our policy in our room about having guests over? Um, what kinds of things am I willing to share or not share? They're gonna walk through that during their floor meetings with their resident assistants. And that document is gonna be available for them to talk through. But even if it's a different subject than what you may be on the roommate agreement, they're still gonna be able to have that resident assistant there to help them over that. It's really important that people learn win-win negotiation skills. And some, for some students, this is the first opportunity they've had because it's the first time they're sharing the space. Others, maybe not, and they're coming here with those skills. But we really, really ask that we work through it. And if it's something that is just not gonna work, then we're gonna work with your student as long as we have space to help them find a new location. That's what Brad is really good at. So remember his name, it's gonna kill me for that. Um, parking, yes, we have parking. Students can bring cars to campus. You should have or will be getting information in your student will about getting your parking permit. I believe a notice went out today to your students saying that they can log on um, starting August 9th to register their vehicle to get a parking permit. Now, our residence halls are right here and the parking is right here. And it seems like a great distance is really about a block. Um, we do have shuttle service and it is something that, parking's not bad on this campus, but it's something for them to know that they're gonna have to walk back and forth to their parking spaces. Laundry, in every building, matter of fact, we took this picture last week. Um, there's laundry in every building. We do not have quarters. It is run off your student ID card and it's built into the fee for um, living on campus. So make sure that they know they can get their laundry done and there's plenty of space and time for them to do that. We ask you make sure that you look at your homeowner's insurance and see if your student will be covered or if you need to get renter's insurance for the student. And it's usually very, very reasonable, but it's something that's important. So if something happens, um, if something gets broken, something goes missing, at least your student will have insurance and we strongly encourage it. We're not gonna check, but it really is something that will be on your, of your assistance. Um, billing, once again, their students are gonna get two different bills. One's gonna be the cost of tuition and dining the, uh, and student fees. The other is going to be the cost of the room and only the room. And like I said, Nature is gonna go through that um, she sends out billing by email. Then as we go through the semester, if your student has a monthly payment plan and has chosen that, she actually delivers notices to the rooms so that students know that that bill is due. Um, it's, it's pretty reasonable in how she's got it broken up. But once again, if you have questions about that, email me and I will get the questions to Nigel or watch for her sending out an invitation to really walk through this in a, in a manner that's going to be much more in depth. Um, there were some parents before this today were asking what the charges were for a double and single. Um, we've got the link right here and we can put that in the chat, please. Then we will be able to go in and look and see what the cost is for an academic year 10 month and 12 months for the different configurations. Move in. Thank you for asking earlier. Is August 28th. You will be getting, or your student will be getting an email saying, hey, you're moving into this room at this time on the 28th. And it will be between early in the morning and about three o'clock in the afternoon because we're moving everybody in very quickly this year so your students can get to orientation, which starts at four o'clock on the 28th. Um, it really depends on where your student lives because we have a whole configuration about how we load people in and load people out. But to make it a little easier this year, your student is gonna get an invitation to do what's called stow and go. So prior to opening on the 28th, previous week, um, they're gonna have an opportunity to make an appointment and bring stuff and drop it off. And then to go ahead and lock the door and go home. That way we can kind of lift some of the burden of having so many people move in in such a short period of time. And my hope is that it's gonna make it much easier for you. 
we do have like some daytime evening uh, appointments open and we will have a uh, weekend appointments open too. So hopefully we can accommodate you for that. Um, we just really wanna make some of the stress come off of moving so quickly with moving in. Because we know it's a big transition. Um, if you have a student who's in a sport and they're doing uh, training before the 28th, they will be communicating with their coach and the coach will be working with us on their room assignment and getting them um, onto campus and settled before they start their uh, all workouts and practices. So make sure that your student is in communications with their coach. <clears throat> in the chat, we're going to have a link that's showing you what to bring and what not to bring. Um, please, some of the things that get the most confusing are anything that can burn, um, like candles, incense, um, any kind of fragrances, even those little pot boilers that have the, the wax beads that go in, they're really just not safe. Um, so no, we don't allow that. We also don't allow outside furniture. First, there's not room for it. But secondly, we don't know what kind of condition it is and what its fire code rating is. So it's just not something we're going to allow. Yes, your student can bring a refrigerator. It can be up to the 3.2 cubic feet, which is like a little over three feet tall, um, or a, a very small one and a microwave. I recommend that your students talk to their roommates and have that conversation about who's bringing what, because you're not gonna want two refrigerators, two microwaves, two everything. Um, and if you have questions, Brad will answer this email. <laughs> um, we all will answer this email. So if you have questions, please do not hesitate to call or to send an email. Um, we will respond to you as absolutely as quickly as we possibly can. Um, I'm going to go link over to the Q&A and Kirby. Oh, before we go, Kirby and I are working on some communications with families. And we have a link that hopefully you will also get this link in the chat. Um, <clears throat> if you are interested in getting direct information um, via Facebook or Instagram or email from Housing and Dining about things that are going on and deadlines that your students may be facing, please fill out the survey. What we're finding is for some people, because they have a firewall built, they can't quite get click on the link for it to run. So copy and paste it into whatever web browser you use and answer the survey. It's a big three questions. Um, and make sure that you're putting your email in there so that I know who I'm gonna be communicating with. Um, but we really wanna make sure that we're doing a partnership with you so that we can help your student transition to the campus as quickly and as easily as possible and to help you know how to support your student, which is the whole purpose of this communication plan. Okay, Kirby, why don't you tell me when you want me to click? Sounds good. Um, if you didn't get the intro at the beginning, my name is Kirby Roberts. I work with dining, all things dining. So any question you have today, I can definitely give you an answer. So next slide, please, Michelle. The meal memberships, we have both um, resident and commuter on here. So if any of the commuters didn't hop off, you'll be able to see that right there. I linked in the chat box some information. Highly recommend just copying and pasting that or taking a photo of that right now because all of this information is on our website. Um, basically, if you have a first year student who is living on campus, they will not go hungry. There's two options for meal memberships and that's unlimited or unlimited plus. And the only difference between those is the amount of Coursera cash the student receives per semester. So unlimited growth points are truly unlimited growth points. They can come in for one point at breakfast. They can come in for one point at lunch, one point at dinner. They can come in any time between 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, and get a meal. They can even come in just for a cup of coffee or an apple. Regardless, unlimited, truly unlimited. They will not go hungry. They also have guest meals. So if you want to join them and come on in, no problem, they can uh, bring you. Or if they have a cousin who's visiting the school or something like that, they can also bring a guest and that's per semester. Uh, the commuter you'll see on this side, they don't come with growth points, but they come with Corsair cash. And Corsair cash is dining money that's loaded onto your student ID. So you'll see right here, never lose your student ID. Corsair cash is dining dollars and dining dollars come with the meal plan. Um, they'll be used at all of our dining locations that we'll go into in the next slide, but real 
really quick, if you do wanna reload money onto your card for your student, you would do it through UMD dollars. And the only difference between Coursera Cash and UMD dollars is Coursera Cash is your meal plan. And then UMD dollars can be used, it's also on the student ID, but can be used for printing or parking or that kind of thing. So definitely don't lose your student ID. You for commuters, I'm sorry, what? Are you even seeing the slides? I see the slides, yeah. Okay. Yes, thanks. Um, for the UMD dollars as well in Coursera Cash, um, they also offer discounted rates to the Grove. So if there are any commuters on here, you're able to access the Grove, which is that big hub, that big um, drum that's in between Balsam and Spruce. And you can come in there anytime for discounted rates as well. So very good to know. But here's a list of all the places you can eat. So for unlimited, the Grove is unlimited. For all the other locations listed on here, that would be where you would use your Coursera cash or UMD dollars or credit debit, cash, et cetera. Um, for commuters, you can eat at all of these locations as well, um, but you would be using your Coursera cash at all of these locations, credit, debit, or cash. So on the bottom there, you can see pay with a discount using Coursera cash or UMD dollars. Next slide. All right, just some perks in the Grove. Um, if you have not toured with us, I highly recommend you do. If not, you can visit the website as well. And they actually have some gorgeous photos of the Grove, but the Grove brand new, like Michelle said, of Balsam and Spruce. We opened it for last year, but again, we didn't have full um, participation. So we're really excited to open this semester. We have all you care to eat, which means once you're in, once you've used one point to access the Grove, you're in and you can stay for all of the choices we offer. We have a grill station, which features a different menu each day. We offer veggie burgers, halal burgers, beyond burgers. Um, all of our burgers are made in house, so they're pressed, which is awesome. I have them all the time. We also have a gorgeous pizza oven. You'll see it right when you walk in. We do flatbreads, calzones, just great stuff. We make our own dough as well really good, especially if you love pizza. We also have a cauliflower pizza, gluten-free pizza, and we sometimes do a vegan pizza on that station, but usually it's featured at our plant-based station. We have a pasta station, a made-to-order salad and deli bar, and um, like I mentioned just now, plant-based, which offers all vegan and vegetarian food. We also have a menu that changes every day at a station, and with that comes a lot of options. We have a lot of vegetarian options, a lot of vegan options, and the best part is a fresh baked deli. Um, I think we may have lost Michelle, but that's okay. I will share my screen to this. All right, so if you can see it, we were right here with the perks. Basically with this screen, what I wanted to show is that we have an incredible amount of choices in the growth. You won't go hungry and we have a lot of variety and a lot of quality and a lot of um, local foods as well as foods we make in-house, which is great. So definitely try us out when you come. And the biggest thing is don't be shy, self-identify. So we accommodate the top eight allergens. That's dairy, peanuts, tree nuts, eggs, wheat, soy, fish, and shellfish. Um, the Grove is actually a nut-free facility, which means the only nuts that we have are pre-packaged. So we offer small PC containers of peanut butter that other students can use, but nothing we make for the servery, the entire servery will be in contact with peanut butter or tree nuts. So if you have an allergy that's not one of the eight listed, we ask that you identify it um, and you identify it with health services as well. So you just call them or email them and tell them just so that they have it in their records. But one of these really cool features is you can actually put this on your phone. This is one of our dining apps, Dine on Campus, and you just download it and your allergy card shows up. So if you don't want to announce it to the whole world that you have an allergy, that is fine. You can show it to one of our dining staff and just let them know um, because it's better to self-identify. So don't be shy, self-identify. We are very helpful. You can always ask for a manager or supervisor. So just a little bit about our sustainability. Um, we're really big on sustainability at school. I mentioned earlier with all of our choices, we have a lot of local and on-campus choices. Um, we pride ourselves in sustainability. So one really cool thing I always like to point out is on campus, we have a freight farm, which is basically a, a renovated um, freight truck into a farm that we grow lettuce out of. So all of our lettuce, all of our herbs, they all come out of this. Um, and we have an on-campus farmer. So if any of your students are really interested in either engineering or you know food in general, 
they can definitely stop by and we give tours every day, but I like to point that out. So if you don't have any questions or answers in the chat, I will check the chat now, but this main page, very important as well. You can follow everything we do and everything your student does. UMass D Eats, we post a lot of different events that we hold. We post a lot of giveaways on here for your students. And um, sometimes we post your students on there. So it's pretty cool to follow along. Facebook, definitely, if you have one. Again, you can email us at any time, dining at umassd.edu. And our website is dineoncampus.com slash umassd. And I put that in the chat, so. Um, let me see if there's any questions for dining. No, so Michelle, I'm not sure if this is question time for you, but we've got some housing questions. Absolutely, and my computer shut down, so my apologies. No I'm, problem, yeah. I'm glad you were, you, you're so good, Kirby. Um, I'm not able to see any chat. All right, how about I read them to you? That would be beautiful. Do students help unload cars on move-in day? Actually, yes. Matter of fact, um, our athletes this year are the only ones that we have moving in early. And in trade for them moving in early, they help us with move-in day. So you will have some people there. We also have some nice big bins that you can put things in and carry up, um, go up the elevators with. So yes, that will happen. Not as expansively as we may have had in previous years, but we will have help. So they'll definitely have help. Awesome. Michelle, what dorms on the tour? Is it Balsam or Spruce? Actually, you know? they go through both. Um, they go through the, the Welcome Center is in Balsam. Um, and they go through the living area downstairs on the first floor in Balsam. And then they go over to Spruce to see a showroom. Just to let you know, if you've seen Balsam, then you've seen Spruce because they are identical. Um, mirror images of each other. So they have the same amenities, the same size rooms, all that. Great, and now I'm gonna bundle three questions because they're all about the same thing. So is there a place you can go to see who your roommate is? My son never received a list of potential roommates when he filled out his information. He's checked back several times, but currently does not have a roommate. And when will a student get assigned a roommate? Brad, can you answer that please? I sure can. Thank you. Um, let's hang on video here. Um, all right. Roommate stuff. Um, if people already have roommates, they can see who those are uh, by logging in through the portal and, and see their information. Uh, it's possible that a student has picked one side of a double and nobody has picked the other side yet, which means uh, it wouldn't show who that roommate is because there isn't a roommate assigned yet. Um, and it, you, you get your roommate information when there's a roommate. Um, yeah, it, uh, again, it's possible that somebody has picked, you know, bed one in a room, but bed two is as yet unclaimed. Um, I don't know why it wouldn't have shown a list of potential roommates, uh, but if you're, that student wants to email housing at umasd.edu, we'll take a peek at it and see if it's something going on behind the scenes on our end and, uh, and we'll fix it. Um, we'll, we'll do what we can. So uh, happy to help. Also, I saw a question about balsam and spruce being air conditioned. Yes, they are. Uh, and that same question asked for another, the picture of the furniture to be shown again. And I don't know what picture we meant, but Michelle can probably grab that. Yeah, let me go through my Q&A. How much room is there under the bed? Uh, I think we checked yesterday and uh, the beds are, I think, 22 inches high uh, by default. And yeah, you can fit a little like three drawer, uh, a little three drawer, what's the word? Dresser. I couldn't think of the word for dresser uh, under there if you need to, or one of the, the small cube refrigerators. Okay. Uh, early move-in information. Uh, we're going to send out a uh, move-in email in early August, that first week of August, which will include information about early move-ins, about our stow and go program, and uh, just general move-in information. So just keep an eye on your UMass Dartmouth email, uh, especially that first week of August. Michelle's got that photo up right now. Brad, do you know the closet space? I don't know exact numbers. 
um, you know, uh, maybe maybe bring a seasonal wardrobe if possible uh, and not all your clothes at once. In, in my mind, I'm like, yeah, it's a normal size closet, but that means different things to different people. So I don't want to, uh, you know, just say that and, and it, what I think it means is not what somebody else thinks it means. Um, so we'll, uh, again, if you want to email that question to housing at umsd.edu, we'll, uh, we'll respond via email. Um, um, concerned. Rooms? What's that? You get a mattress in those rooms? Yes, twin XL mattress. That's um, you get a mattress. If, if, uh, if the website lists August 14th as a moving date, uh, that's just behind the scenes stuff for us in terms of uh, billing. I'm not going to bore you with the details of uh, the billing system, but uh, 814 is not correct. Uh, that's just the earliest anyone would possibly move in for the fall semester. Uh, but everyone, we're planning on uh, August 28th. Uh, a student alone in a double happens not often, um, especially as things, uh, as, as we get closer and closer to uh, school starting, those, uh, those doubles are going to fill up. Uh, I checked this morning. We have 83 students who have put in payments uh, and said, hey, I want to live on campus. And those students have not selected a room yet. So the spaces they can choose from are, are limited. And, um, you know, so the students who are alone in a double right now may not be alone in a double much longer. Uh, it does happen, but infrequently. Bean bags are not allowed. Uh, Michelle, I'm looking to you for confirmation. Yeah, uh, bean bags are, are not allowed. They're actually a fire hazard and they off gas. You don't want them in your room. So no, they're, they're considered furniture just like everything else. Sorry. Um, can uh, items be mailed to UMass Dartmouth before arrival? Yes, but you know, don't, don't do it now. Uh, do it you know, the week before. Uh, we need to get uh, resident information over to the mail room so that they don't turn packages away. Uh, and that won't happen for a couple of weeks. So, you know, if the week before you want to send your books uh, via the, you know, ship your books or a microwave or, or whatever your, your target order um, to campus, you can do that, but just, you know, wait a little bit. Uh, bicycles, we do have places for them to be locked up outside of buildings, but some students are more comfortable keeping them in their rooms. Uh, you know, check with your roommate. Uh, to, it's a matter of personal preference. Uh, you know, don't put hooks in the walls to hang your bike up uh, because, you know, that's that's more than normal wear and tear. But, you know, if you guys are cool having bikes in your room, it's fine with us. Don't ride them in the hallway. I'll tell you that. Uh, Balsam is a total of five floors. Uh, the first floor is mostly classroom and administrative space. There are some rooms down there. And then uh, rooms two, three, four, and five are uh, residential. Whew, that was a lot of talking. You did great. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Michelle, great. could you go to the next slide, please? Absolutely. And then, Brad, are uh, shades or curtains provided? Uh, yes, there are pull down shades. They're blind. Uh, it's wrong. Yes. They're yes, blind. there we go. That's that's what they're called. Uh, there are there is an honors community, uh, and the student would have selected, hey, I'm interested in living with honors students, and then it would have shown. Um, it was shown that student, like, these are the honors rooms available. These are the honors spaces available. Great. Do the rooms have drawers under the bed or do they provide them? There's a small dresser. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there's two um, sets with two drawers each. They fit yeah. under the bed or they can be stacked. Um, but yeah, and they're nice and deep too. Okay, so I'm not sure if we answered this one. Um, we, we did. The all of them? Yeah, I think so. The, the can, can items be mailed? Yes. Just um, don't do it. The uh, deferred one about oh. coming in later. I don't see that question. Is it in the um, chat? It's in the Q&A, but mm. I can send it to you. I'll send it to you through message right now. So I just sent it to you in the chat. Um, what someone else asked if you could just repeat also on the portal, where do they see the roommate or maybe just drop it in the chat? Um, I can't really drop it in the chat. Uh, it is, uh, honestly, if you just go back to like the room selection area, uh, the, the last screen you would see would say, this is your room and this is your roommate information. Um, 
we do not have an area set aside for students who deferred last year um, for, for, you know, 19 year old or people who have had the, the COVID gap year. Um, but your student could put that in their little match.com description and say, hey, you know, I, I deferred a year and I'm looking to live with somebody else who is, you know, 19 or, or you know, took a year off uh, and maybe find a, a, a roommate match that way. But we don't have a specific uh, thing. How big is the desk? You know, desk size. Go, so, so, like I, you know, I was just yeah. in the room yesterday, and so I kind of wish I would have known. I know Nature does have actual dimensions of the wardrobes and the desks. Um, I would say about three feet wide and maybe 20 inches deep. That's a guess. So don't quote me on it. Okay. Someone said there doesn't look like space for a microwave, but I'm sure students put microwaves in their, their rooms. Often they sit on top of their refrigerator if they bring a refrigerator. Okay. And yes, we do have a kitchen. Matter of fact, they're beautiful kitchens on the first floor of both buildings. And um, I'm envious because it's huge, expansive space with a regular oven, a stove top, and a microwave there as well as you know the sink to do their dishes because you want to keep it tidy so yes that's available and does um, that come with all the kitchen gear or do they have to supply have, that people usually bring their own if they're going to want a cookie pan or you know a, a pan for their ramen or mac and cheese have them bring their own just so they are using what they have got with themselves um, I see a question about tours. Has that been answered? No. Um, yes, you can work with the Welcome Center to go do a tour. They, I think I saw them do like a dozen different tours today. Uh, so they are working with everybody very, very quickly. Um, I would say call them and see if you can get in or if they're welcome and just walk-ins. I don't know at this point, um, but it might be better for you to make sure that you have time set aside. And they're open during business hours, Monday through Friday. All rooms are carpeted. Mm -hmm. With that same, same gray brown carpet. Any other questions? I see our friend Shelly's here. Yes, I'm back from commuter land. I just wanted to make sure uh, you had time to answer all those questions. So we do have some flex time. Have we been able to answer them all? Looks like there's a, a just a, one more question about the carpets. So there's carpets in all the rooms, but who vacuums the rooms? Uh, the students are responsible for vacuuming their own spaces. So inside the room, student responsibility, hallways. Uh, there's a, there's a, a company that takes care of hallways and, and common areas. Just so you know, we do go into student rooms approximately once a month, once a month, just to make sure that everything's healthy and safe. So that schedule will be posted for your student to know when walkthroughs, that's what we call them, walkthroughs happen. Um, if there's an issue, we'll talk to the student about, hey, that can't be on the wall or, hey, can you move that? Um, but yes, we are watching out for health and safety needs when we do the walkthroughs and get just getting to know your students too. Uh, all, sorry, all the doors in Balsman Spruce, room doors and exterior doors are card access. Mm -hmm. uh, there are no metal keys. Uh, some students bring vacuums, uh, you know, depending on how important cleanliness is to them. Um, but yeah, we, we do not supply vacuums. Uh, I don't think there's a, a checkout system, Michelle, do you back me up one way I or the other? I have not seen one, but that's something yeah. I can share. I, I'll that's something we can talk about with our hall councils. Yeah, hall councils and with our uh, private partner. Quiet hours. Um, they're different. Um, on Sunday through Thursday, I believe it's midnight. Could be earlier until 8 a.m. It's really the most important Part of that that students seem to be aware of is the morning one. 
Um, but yes, we do have quiet hours. Those kinds of rules, you'll, your student will actually go through one by one with their resident assistant on their very first floor meeting on their very first night. So that way they're not gonna be surprised by anything. Plus we do have our handbook, which has our policies and procedures posted on our website. So you can go to the housing website and actually find all that good stuff. Yes, they are. The, the wardrobes are already in the room and they're under the bed. That's the general location that we stick them. Okay, I think we will need to wrap things up as we transition to our very patient career center staff.